Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Storymakers. Today I have Patrick McDonald with us and he is the creator of a perfectly messed up story. Thank you and good night. And most recently, Tech, the modern cave boy. Welcome. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Rocco. Yes. So these are just three of many books. About how many? Books. You know, picture books, I think I'm up to 11, but mm -hmm. then I also, I do a comic strip called Mutts and I have compilations and I, I think I have about 40 books in print right now. Really? Yes. So before we talk about uh, tech and uh, a perfect combination of uh, dinosaurs, uh, prehistoric time and technology, we have Thank You and Good Night, a very uh, a sweet story. So tell us about both of these. Sure, sure. Well, Thank You and Good Night was, uh, I wanted to do a bedtime book, mm -hmm. you know. I think in pictures, so I always do, do uh, little sketches. And I originally was with the Mutz characters. I thought it might be fun if they had a pajama party. And then at the same time, I was really reading Good Night Moon, which is just, you know, incredible. So mm -hmm. I started playing around with the bunny from Good Night Moon. I thought it might be funny if he went to the pajama party. Then I evolved to be his pajama party, and I thought it might be fun. I did a little tribute, so a bear who kind of is supposed to be Winnie the Pooh and an elephant who's supposed to be Babar. I just thought it would be fun if all those characters had a pajama party. I always have a bunch of book ideas in my head, and I was also playing with a book about gratitude and thank you, you know, how important it is for kids to learn gratitude and uh, you know, be thankful for the day. And then I thought it might be nice to actually combine the two. So it became thank you and a good night. So it was a bedtime story that at the end of their pajama party, they kind of give thanks for their day. You must have a favorite illustration. <laughs> you know, that's a toughie. I got a lot of favorite illustrations. You know, looking at it, I think I love this drawing of them taking time to look at a shooting star and, mm -hmm. and making a wish. That book was done on a handmade paper and it was a very delicate paper, but the way it took the watercolor just gave it a special look. And a perfectly <laughs> messed up story. So a, a messy book, huh? A very messy book. You know, with that book, again, I start all my books with sketches. So I, I was drawing a character who was totally aware that he was a cartoon in my sketchbook. What I love about picture books and comics is that the characters just seem so alive on the page. I mean, mm -hmm. as a kid, you know, Winnie the Pooh is alive. Piglet, I mean, those little drawings, it, that's to me, that's the magic of illustration, that cartoons are just these little pen and ink lines, but they seem alive on the page. So I was drawing this character who I really wanted to be on the live on the page and talked about being on the page. Um, so I was fooling around with this character walking around my sketchbook and talking about things, and I spilled some ink, and then he started complaining about, hey, you're ruining my book. So in this book, Little Louie is in his book and he's really happy and going about his day. And then out of nowhere, there's a jelly stain. Right. And it's like, who's eating jelly while they're reading my book? The book just gets messier and messier and messier. And, you know, the message being that, uh, you know, stuff happens in life and you should not make a big deal of it and just love what is. And a favorite illustration from here. A favorite illustration in here. Well, you know, um, it goes from a jelly stain to a peanut butter stain, and then it some kid messy. actually draws crayons in his book. And I think my favorite illustration is out of nowhere, a paper towel tries to clean mm -hmm. the, uh, and actually makes a bigger mess, which drives right. Louie even crazier. Besides uh, creating children's books, you also uh, do a, a comic strip, Mutts. Yeah, I do a daily comic strip in the newspapers since yeah. 1994. So any uh, thoughts about doing a actual uh, graphic novel? You know, actually I, I have thought about it, but I tell you, when you do a daily comic strip and you do picture books, a graphic novel is a big undertaking. Tech, uh, the modern cave boy, and uh, this is an advanced uh, reader's copy. So the actual book that's out Actually, the cover has uh, some sort of texture on it, right? Actually, it's going to look just like an iPad device. It's, uh, it's done on really thick cardboard, so mm -hmm. it has the weight and feel, and you see the edges are curved. curved so it's right. really going to, you know, I've seen a sample copy of it, and uh, it really does feel like you're holding an iPad when you read the book. It is a combination of, well, 
Uh, there's a dinosaur in it. In it. A, very <laughs> a lot friendly. of dinosaurs. Yeah, a lot of dinosaurs, but he has a dinosaur friend. Friend, Larry. Yes. Larry. Larry, Larry the dinosaur. And, uh, and here, here we have uh, a picture of Larry the dinosaur, and uh, Tech refuses to actually interact. He, he spends all his time on his... Uh, in his cave. <laughs> in his cave on his uh, device. A child may say, well, you know, what kind of devices did they have in a prehistoric time? Well, Tech's dad actually... Uh, invented the internet. In invented <laughs> the internet, as many other people have claimed. Yes. Right, <laughs> yes. And one of the other fun things about it, because, you know, we said it's going to look like a uh, iPad as the pages go. As we progress in the book, we actually see the battery. The battery starts losing charge. Where's your phone? Let's, okay. see, your, let's see your phone. Yeah, I'm probably okay. the least techie guy around, but yeah. I, I do have a phone. I'm uh, let's see. Oh, well, no, it's not that old. Yeah. Yes, and but actually, uh, uh, text on the phone. And your text on the phone, yes. And you have many apps? Are you, you say you're not a techie no, no, guy. No, no. I, you know, I'm, I, I still dip a pen into a bottle of ink when I do these drawings. And you brought uh, some of the early uh, yeah, yeah. sketches from, uh, from tech. Well, you know, like I said, I think in pictures. So all my books start with doodling. Mm -hmm. I, I pretty much feel like I doodle for a living. Right. And uh, with tech, I started the idea of maybe doing a book about a cave boy. Mm -hmm. And I thought what would be funny would, to give him a beard. So the idea of like a little five, six-year-old boy with a full beard. I just thought it was a funny drawing. Which you explain in the book. Yes. Yes. Because things were hairy back then. That's right. But uh, so this is one of the first drawings I did of, uh, he didn't have, his, his name wasn't Tech then. His name was, actually his name was Ugg. Ugg. He Ugged a lot. And after I did that drawing, I said, well, what, what story would a cave boy have? And I said, well, a cave boy, he lives in a cave. So I thought it'd be funny if the, the story was he had a dinosaur friend who couldn't get him out of the cave. And that probably sat in my sketchbook for about a year or two. And then I was thinking, well, why is he in the cave? And I'm looking at today's kids, everybody is on their phone or their device. I thought it would be kind of funny if Cave Boy's problem was he was in his cave on his device. You know, you mentioned graphic novels before, right. and I kind of, when I lay out my books, I kind of lay them out like a graphic novel with each, each panel representing a page. So, uh, and when I look at this, this sketch is from 2008. So I've been thinking about tech for eight years. And, uh, you know, I do the little drawings and then I add the, uh, the type for mm -hmm. this, this story. And the story, even though eight years ago, stayed pretty much the same. What do you really enjoy about uh, creating books for kids? I've wanted to be a cartoonist since I was probably five years old. Right. And, uh, I just love telling stories with words and pictures. And the comic strip and the picture book are very similar. Right. You tell short little stories. What I love about these books is I mean, you have to be simple and right to the point, you know, and, and make it fun. I've found so much joy out of the books and the comics I loved as a kid. I always feel like if I could give some of that joy back, that's my job. Any advice for uh, kids that like to draw, but they want to get better at it? <laughs> you know, I believe that uh, practice makes perfect. You know, the thing when you do a daily comic strip is I pretty much draw every day. And it's not a job, it's something I love to do. And I, as a kid, I just drew all the time. And draw things that you know, like even, you know, my comic strip ended up being about the dog I owned named Earl. I mean, he was so much fun to look at. Mm -hmm. So I would draw him all the time and he would give me ideas. So even just start, you know, drawing your brother or your sister or draw. I used to draw my family all the time. And what's fun about art is the whole world is your oyster. You could, uh, draw anything you want. Moms and dads and kids can uh, disconnect. And read the book. And read a Tech the Modern <laughs> Cave Boy. So thanks for being here with us. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing the actual real copy of the book. I am too. <laughs> thanks. And remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format.